In my opinion, Matt Reeves The Batman is an example of a comic book film that is quite different to the traditional one we usually get, and it's also quite a fantastic one too. It took a risk in giving us a slow burn detective thriller more over a standard superhero blockbuster, and while there are elements of those types of films still present, this project definitely stands apart from the traditional type of filmmaking we usually get. I like when filmmakers can take their characters in directions that are for one, appropriate, and two, unique, not being the same kind of approach that we are used to seeing. If films like this are good, it calls for a sense of longevity from an individual perspective, but it also signals for different comic book films to come after. We saw that with Joker back in 2019, and hopefully we will be getting more of it come the future. In this video essay, I'm going to be discussing the reasons why I think we need more comic book movies like The Batman, and why I think they can be just as successful alongside that of the more traditional blockbusters we get in this genre. But before I get into it, if you want to keep up to date on any of my future content surrounding The Batman, then don't forget to support this video by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. Also, feel free to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit and Instagram at Cortex Videos, which is all linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's dive into my video essay on why I think we need more comic book movies like The Batman. So The Batman is a rare feat amongst the constant slate of comic book releases that quite regularly don't take too much risks. Yes, The Batman does have brief moments with the more fantastical things we usually see, and has a scene or two hinting at what's to come. But a good 99% of this film doesn't waste its scenes setting up sequels, giving the audience quite one-dimensional characters, nor does it look like it has the budget of a Netflix movie, even though initially it was only going to be made for a hundred million dollars. Now of course the pandemic created issues during the production that led the budget to rise much closer to 200 million dollars but the end result of this film is one with some of the best cinematography and storytelling in the genre over recent years. And to make it clear I love all types of comic book film. I like when a more conventional universe film can prove it is well made and take all of the integral production and storytelling elements more more seriously. But then I do also find myself aligning more with the comic book film that situates outside of the norm and one that really strives to give us something we haven't seen in this genre before. I essentially like all of it when it's done well. The Batman being a quite different one that aims to capture more of the detective noir than it is the next line of product that big studios want to sell is yet another example in the last few years from DC that has received overwhelming praise and success, showing that audiences want new interpretations of beloved characters. It's the type of film that's going to inspire filmmaking in the comic book genre and raise the bar for those that come after. To highlight though, I believe that 4 out of 5 of the last DC films have been quite different from each other and been successful to differing degrees. Joker was a huge success at the box office, but it also gave us an Oscar winning portrayal that has been celebrated as one of the best of the genre over the last few years. Zack Snyder's Justice League was a director's chance to show a majority of his initial vision, and it paid off in being one of the most successful streaming endeavours of the last year when we're talking about global viewership. A film that I also really liked. And then while The Suicide Squad didn't do great at the box office, for those who did see it, a lot of them really enjoyed James Gunn's take on the characters, and especially his R-rated approach to a comic book team-up film. And now The Batman, being a film that is tracking to make around $800 to $900 million worldwide, one that has very strong critical and audience reviews, is the next in line to continue this trend of distinct comic book films from DC. Every film I've just mentioned is completely different from each other. There's not one direction that all these films seem to be heading in. They all tell their own stories within the foundations of different genres, and the filmmaking all stands out uniquely. And while DC fans seem to be having a civil war over what direction DC films should be going in, my question to them is, why not all of it? DC have proved over the last two years that from a quality and for the most part a monetary standpoint, 
standpoints that they can make quite unique comic book films that rank among the best of the genre. They are giving us varying flavours of what comic book movies can be and they aren't just relying on building a universe vision in which everything has to be interconnected and feel very similar. I argue this approach kind of lessens the impact an individual film can accomplish when it comes to longevity for that piece of art. And don't get me wrong, some of the films I've mentioned contain some of these universe building aspects, but they aren't as obvious as the usual universe building comic book film. In my opinion, The Batman is the next movie in line that has really shown that the genre can be successful in all different ways. And while at certain times it can be a shame that audiences don't appreciate these kinds of approaches as much in comparison to the next film we get in a lot of cinematic universes, it's still telling that a film like The Batman, being a hard-boiled noir detective movie, is on course to make just south of a billion. The universe movies are of course successful, people like them, and that's great for the genre, but then the different types of films that are doing well should be a signal for much more of them. These types of endeavours call for other unique films to be made, and ultimately it will help keep the comic book genre fresh as we move into the future. In the midst of a lot of similar looking movies, it's good to have successful and different ones existing too. And while I talk about the uniqueness of the Batman, there aren't much superheroes that get the attention that Batman does, a character whose tragic backstory has been done many times, even so that new films and filmmakers are now suggested to move past the death of the Waynes because we've seen it done so much and well before. The audience's familiarity with the Caped Crusader means that the attention is now placed much more heavily on what a filmmaker does with him, and this is a huge advantage when it comes to making a different kind of comic book film. Over the many iterations, Batman has become more and more the sort of character who can be mirrored by the unique sensibilities of the filmmaker bringing him to screen. And not much comic book characters or films in a particular franchise, which have gone on beyond a decade, can hold a candle to the differing takes we've seen on The Dark Knight throughout the years. It's not just the direction of the character, but it's also the way each filmmaker has made a different kind of Batman film. I've spoken plenty about the older adaptations on the channel before and what makes them unique, but now with Matt Reeves' version, we got the latest auteur transforming Batman into a character that has a long way to go when becoming a hero, all in the structure of a detective serial killer film. It's an interesting take that resembles more of old school noirs, Hitchcockian thrillers, and that of Travis Bickle in Taxi Driver than it does with heroes we see in comic book films today. Like I said before though, it's not fully in line with these kinds of artsy examples because it does have a fair amount of comic book-esque scenes and ideals too. But it does totally lean more into the noir element and Batman as a character, Gotham as a world, and DC's current approach to bringing something new in a stuffed landscape. Right from the opening moments of the film, where Paul Dano's Riddler spies on and brutally kills Gotham's mayor, eventually leaving a personal note for Batman, we know exactly what Matt Reeves is trying to do. And that is a Batman through a noir lens, who also has a chance to live up to his comics title as the world's greatest detective. Taking the Batman in the detective noir direction includes rundown aspects you'd expect. A main character and world with endless rain, moody voiceovers, and multiple replayings of Nirvana's Something in the Way. And if Reeves didn't seamlessly bring this all together, it could have turned out as a film that becomes almost self-parody. But he's a dedicated and consistent filmmaker, known for playing a part in also re-establishing the Apes franchise quite successfully too, and the experience he gained really aided him when it came to leaving his distinct mark on a Batman film. This isn't a case of when a director of a Marvel or DC Universe flick compares the approach of their film to the work of iconic auteurs of the past, and instead we mostly get more of the sensibilities we are used to seeing. Whether that 
that be in genre, tone, or reused story traits in those superhero projects. And that's not a dig at them, because like I was suggesting before, they do occasionally pull off crowd-pleasing films like No Way Home, which fans of that property really like. But doing that all the time does subject the genre to over-repetition, and it's quite clear that when it comes to Marvel, apart from No Way Home and its obvious nostalgic elements, this universe hasn't really continued the momentum that it had pre-Endgame. The filmmaking also is quite lacking, and it links more towards the conveyor belt of product over recent years. But with Reeves as a particular example, he genuinely approaches the character and world of a character like Batman in a way that makes his film feel like it earns its own status beyond influences and property. Yes, it's David Fincher-esque in terms of being influenced by that of Seven, but seeing a character like Batman through that lens and combining it with the comic book foundations we'd expect, it makes the film feel like a perfect balance with its own ideas too. The Batman essentially takes the comic book movie into another genre. I'm not saying that we need more detective noirs when it comes to comic book characters, but what I am saying is that by having these different movies in the comic book genre, like Joker and the new Batman film for instance, it calls for other unique takes on comic book characters that can be just as successful as them. These types of movies can exist in accordance with the more conventional comic book film and do just as well. If it was just universe movies, which 90% of the market is today, then we're not really in inspiring filmmakers, people who work on these films, and loyal fans of these projects to really keep the comic book genre feeling new. So when a Joker, a Logan, or the Batman comes along, it again makes me question, why not more? Especially when we see how well they can consistently do from a box office and quality perspective. Yes, there are certain rules that even the most audacious superhero blockbusters must include, whether they're part of a larger cinematic universe or not. But after so many directors have put their own take on a character like Batman, finding a fresher perspective is harder but more fulfilling when it comes to the impact it can bring to a genre, giving us so many films a year, with many of them being very similar in structure and tone. To me, The Batman is one of those rare examples that is able to step outside of the structure and I would love to see much more like it. It's not just taking a character in a new direction with a darker and more grounded story though. It's also a case of grounding the filmmaking within that too. So many of these comic book films today include very relatable and real world themes, but then they also rely on over excessive visual effects to the point where you get moments that simply take you out of it. You can't engage as much in the more important story points or climactic developments because then you also watch scenes that look like they were pulled out of a video game. It's powerful characters fighting other powerful characters, and all the themes and more interesting narrative points that are executed quite well in other moments get bogged down in all of the badly executed spectacle that studios feel they have to put in every film they make as part of a universe. It makes many films look very similar to the ones that came before, and if you aren't invested in that world to quite a degree when it comes to fandom, it's really hard to connect to it through the filmmaking. The Batman in most of its scenes gives the essence of grounded filmmaking, but then also in its limited action scenes, they filmed every shot with something real in camera so that you can clearly see the effort of composition in the final footage. There is care put into the way the camera moves, what it's attached to, and the way everything is lit in frame. Matt Reeves had the Batmobile jump through fire for real, not because he's trying to be edgy, but because he cares about how that primal vehicle looks like in frame. These shots are then lit with natural lights and it really helps you to connect more to what's going on, especially in moments that could take you out of it. It's not a coincidence that the Oscar winning cinematographer of Dune shot the Batman and made it one of the most beautifully shot comic book movies in years. Greg Fraser didn't need to film in front of a green screen or the visual effects guys didn't need to overwhelm the frame with artificially created subjects because a lot of it was shot for real. 
There's a greater sense of authenticity in all of this filmmaking, and primarily, it's a film that is built to last. Not the same type of filmmaking that is consumed and then we move on to the next one. That's part of the reason why myself and a lot of people love the filmmaking in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight trilogy too, one that is still brought up and praised today, because equally, they also made films that not just resonate with the anxieties of that time, but also utilise filmmaking that has lasted. Lasted. Essentially, through a filmmaking and storytelling lens, the Batman is separated from a lot of recent comic book fare, and in my opinion, this is great in a landscape full of similar looking films, and ones that play it more safe. With the popularity of the genre very high, to keep it alive well into the future, films like The Batman will be the ones that help aid that hope. And I can only hope that alongside that of the more traditional films, we get more of the different kinds of movies too. But that was my video discussing why we need more comic book movies like Matt Reeves' The Batman. Again, I love all types of comic book films, and at the end of the day, the story and characters are what matter. But even in the more conventional blockbusters in this genre, I found more recently that there are less and less of them that really convey this to an interesting degree. The Batman being quite a different comic book film already is given the room to become something that stands out, but to be a comic book film that can last the test of time due to the handling of its material and filmmaking. If a filmmaker like Reeves with a powerful vision is given the tools and creative control to make what he set out to achieve, then there's a better chance that he can really make something special. I think he has with the Batman, and it makes examples like 2017's theatrical version of Justice League look all the more worse. That film was studio managed, and what we saw in the Snyder Cut was a vast difference in quality and direction. So hopefully, after films like this, Joker, the Snyder Cut, and The Suicide Squad in the last couple of years, there is the hope that more distinct comic book films will be made, and filmmakers will be given more control when it comes to producing their visions. But let me know down below in the comment section whether you agree that we need more comic book films like The Batman, alongside what your overall thoughts were towards the movie. For much more breakdown videos and essays on The Batman, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.